Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Jean, a dimensional teacher. Um, I help people to move through negative programming or the formatting of our chakras. You could even call it that through our family experience, through our societal experiences and into their true state of love and consciousness. I do this through personal sessions, webinars, and coaching where we take a journey together to shift away from the fear-based living um, into one of consciousness, love, and creative energies. That is our true nature. Uh, thank you for being here and thank you for subscribing if you feel moved to do so. I, um, we have a new moon right off the bat on the 16th of August in Leo at 23 degrees. And that's really engaging with our heart and our creativity and inner child and the younger generation, if appropriate. And Leo likes to play and express and manage and also ties us to the nurturing qualities of cancer, the past, our home, families, feelings, and new moons always initiate activity in our hologram or out there, uh, signaling the time is right for all of these Leo energies. This new moon does square Taurus in, uh, does square Uranus in Taurus, carrying a change agent quality of breakthroughs, surprises, perhaps disruption from your usual patterns and rhythms. But additionally, this new moon is trining that North Node in Aries. A newly arrived in Aries since last month in July, our collective path of growth over the next 18 months of acting on inspiration and instinct and intuition and courageousness this lunation, lunation also conjuncts a retrograde Venus in Leo until she's retrograde until September 3rd, amplifying that which we are seeking to integrate into our programs, our knowledge base, our heart of love and worthiness and self-esteem and relationship patterns. Um, we often learn that quite young. And so this is an opportunity to shine the light on those patterns, those programs, that formatting. And our instincts are very much in flow now in a grounded and practical manner as Mars in Virgo is trining Uranus in Taurus at this new moon. Now, Mercury in Virgo is already slowing down for his retrograde that will occur on the 23rd at 22 degrees of Virgo. He will station direct on September 15th at 8 degrees of Virgo. So retrogrades, which now with Mercury retrograde, we're in quite a retrograde cycle of introspection and integration work, the integration being aware of the patterns that have uh, happened over this past year, even going back into past timelines, being aware of that, uh, opening that awareness so it can be integrated, so it can be seen, so it can be made conscious. And then we bring love into that, right? We bring love and healing to those patterns. But Mercury retrograde certainly is the personal planet that tends to disrupt the normal patterns and functioning and rhythms of life, especially when he's stationing. So he's stationing on the 23rd and he's stationing direct on September 15th. And then we go into uh, this Virgo retrograde pattern, which is really amplifying this theme of uh, health and service and practicality, being in our body, being grounded, the sun also ingresses Virgo at this Mercury station on the 23rd. So we're deeply connecting with these Virgonian themes, which keeps our focus on health and service and discernment. 
And, you know, Virgo's lower expressions are about criticism. And that really lowers the vibration, self-criticism, criticism of others. We actually have been taught through thousands of years of uh, patterns and through the frequencies and power on this planet to be highly critical of ourselves. That's been a very conscious and purposeful program that's been running for some time and affecting humans. You know, those power forces, those power themes and, you know, assigning everything is good or bad. Very little nuance lives here. But when we are in a state of self-criticism, it lowers and contracts our vibration. And remembering we're doing exactly what we need to do in the moment. Uh, we are not without higher wisdom playing out here, a higher plan, a soul path playing out here. And this, of course, also brings us right into health. And as I like to do, because I'm a very grounded practitioner, even while I, I also channel and am a psychic medium, we like to ground this uh, situationally. And so, for example, for health, I'm hearing a lot of clients talking about ADD, self-identifying as attention deficit disorder. And I wanted to just take a few moments and bring some awareness to those factors in our environment and in our lives um, that are geared towards that. A side effect of anxiety and depression actually is ADD. I don't know if you've you know, ever lost someone or something, a crisis has occurred and your ability to hold continuity tends to go down during those themes. So, we have also, you know, moved through the past three or four years, a highly shifting, changing evolutionary time. But for many, it was unnerving what occurred with the powers and the total shifts and changes in businesses and societies and health and school systems. And that can create a sense of anxiety of what's next, but more so. We even go into the social media patterning of the quick scrolling of the, you know, uh, shifting, you know, the moving uh, pictures and shifting them left and right. So it is geared towards short term attention span. Uh, TikTok, short term attention span. And this rewires the brain and like anything, we have positive, uh, less than positive and nuanced experiences with our technology relationship. It's how we use our technology that can affect, you know, how we are affected by it. And we're also seeing, you know, a spike with younger people, especially because social media is the, um, the avenue of the perfect life, the perfect relationship. And, you know, I've seen people's posts, et cetera. And then when I talk with them, their reality is very different than what they're portraying on their posts. But it takes us into the comparison model. And that is a very low vibrational energy as well. And there's a reason why there is the quote, comparison is the thief of joy. So we have that playing out. Now, additionally, which I've touched upon, we're in front of screens a lot more and this occurred during this uh, health event uh, the past few years. And I don't think that was happenstance either. When we're in front of screens, uh, screens emit a blue light. And blue light is actually very harmful to our mitochondria in our brain. It affects the circadian rhythms. I, I see children with screens placed in front of them. Children are asked to be online. So we're spending more and more time online and we're open to this blue light frequency. And there are things you can do for that. You can purchase glasses. You can put, you know, cover on your screens. I always am wearing glasses other than right just this moment. Um, yeah, but I have blue screen glasses everywhere, right? This screens out about 87% of blue light. So I'm protecting my eyes when I wear them also when I watch television, also when I'm on my phone. 
So being aware of that because that upsets sleep patterns. It upsets the mitochondria, which is kind of the general of how our immune system works. And it also, you know, when we're not sleeping well, that lends itself towards ADD symptoms as well. And then, of course, we're surrounded by EMF pollution. Before 5G was rolled out, there were a myriad of white papers written about its harms to human health because that five generation electromagnetic frequency is not in harmony with our own electricity in our body and our chakras. And of course, we are evolutionary mammals and beings and um, souls who adjust to the stressors in our environment. But just an awareness of that too. I power everything down at night and give myself eight, nine clean hours with lowered EMF pollution uh, to let my body really recover and also to help me sleep more deeply. So those are just some examples. And another example was a client of mine a few years ago. She was a coaching client. Uh, so we were working with each other every month. And of course, in 2020, 2021, her teenage son was becoming depressed. And um, as so many children were being shut off from friends, the time in their lives when the social network and the peer group is so important for the formatting of our identity. Um, and they wanted to put them on antidepressants. And I strongly encouraged her to explore, um, it's called SAM-E, SAM, S-A-M-E. It is a natural antidepressant, which is also great for immune health. And she started purchasing that and she did find a good um, child therapist and he worked through that and sidestepped the pill that they wanted to give him because he was reacting in a very normal way to stress in his environment and to the shifts in his life. So that also plays a role in our lives as well. I take Sammy uh, for a couple of months every year just to just to gear things up. Also, it is an, a wonderful immune health booster, which is what we're focused upon. This is a time of preventative medicine and the earth provides all the medicine that we need to heal whatever our ailment is. But, and then finally, you know, another suggestion is coming back to breath. Most people breathe, uh, breathe shallowly. They even hold their breath. There's a reason why the wisdom teachings and the ancient schools are always talking about coming back to breath. Dr. Joe Dispenza, come back to breath. Let the chemicals die down. When we're breathing fully in and out, two counts through the nose, uh, we calm down. The vagus nerve, the central nervous system all comes down and, and uh, we expand to, into more peacefulness and more room in our auric field to be present, to be present. So these are some very real and simple um, things to just be aware of if you feel that you're dealing with ADD. And of course, as I mentioned in the last video, all of the chemicals in our food also affects the mitochondria, which they're also tying in strongly uh, with ADD. And I think one in 10 people is identifying as ADD and about 70% of those one in 10 people are on medications for that. So I bring this up because there are very real stressors and qualities in our environment that are affecting us. And when we come, become proactive in you know, limiting those, adjusting those, taking responsibility for our health, spiritually, mentally, physically, in all manner, we are on the path here. We are on the path here of integration and consciousness. We are... We awaken dimensionally and our awareness grows on preventative health practices and caring for our soul housing. We'll see more and more integrative health practices and returning to nature for our medicine. You know, Luna, my dog, since she's been a puppy, she always eats a certain weed every year. And I trust her to know that there's something in that supposed weed that is providing sustenance and nurturance. And, and we still do that to this day, 10 years later, she seeks out that weed, I pick it for her. 
she chows it down, she's fine, but there is an inner knowing for her instinctually of what her body needs supplementally. And, you know, the average physician receives probably less than a, a few hours of training on nutrition, but that is changing as more and more integrative resources and practitioners are coming online. And it's, uh, I have a friend, her daughter is a pharmaceutical rep. She's in her 20s and gorgeous. And you'll find that, and she, a six-figure salary. So these lovely nubile beings are the ones going into doctor's offices to sell them on the benefits of the next pharmaceutical product. But we want to be impeccable now and be aware of, of that with our mind and our intentions because self-judgment is a learned behavior. We are doing what we need to do in any given moment. And as we awaken and we're integrating the carbon-based DNA with the crystalline DNA, which is occurring this fifth dimensional energy, we're becoming much more aware of these patterns within us and that's extremely healthy. So stay away from the self-judgment, okay? Now, on the 27th, Mars transits into Leo, uh, Libra until October 12th and reflecting the nodal transits because Mars reflects, of course, Aries and he's transiting through the south node placement of Libra, so uh, of relationships. So I imagine we're going to see a strong collective theme of justice and equality themes increasing in focus over the next few weeks fairness in relating Libra. And there's a reason why Libra is called the fist in the velvet glove. Things better be fair or else, right? Uh, but certainly it's drawing our attention and our instincts to all of our relationships. And mind you, Pluto square the nodes is still in orb through about September 3rd. And there's some very interesting themes arriving from that. Another client of mine, she was her Aries house is in her seventh house, interestingly, which is where the North Node is. And she found herself going through some real extreme situations with the Pluto square. And she was forced to reach out for help. And, um, you know, the South Node in Libra can, um, in her first house, can be, I can handle it myself and being self-sufficient, which is wonderful, but it can go too far because none of us are an island. We need one another. It's just she was being forced to reach out for help and people came in and helped her willingly, happily. That's also healthy Virgo expression. When you have the opportunity to help, and this does not mean fixing everybody or over giving, but if there's an opportunity where you see you can improve or help a person or a situation, take it. Helping others helps us. It fulfills our soul destiny as well. So very interesting expression of this Pluto square nodes. Now on the 20, on the 18th of August, Uranus stations retrograde at 23 degrees of Taurus and till January when he will station direct January, 2024 on the 27th of January in 19 degrees of Taurus. So we, we go back into the introspective time into the changes and the things that have happened out there in the world tied to the Uranus Taurus energy. You now, food, money, resources, weather, self esteem patterns, you know, certainly the focus on food, how to cultivate, get healthy food, um, how to work with changing weather patterns. <laughs> and we know that the administration here in the United States, um, they've got a plan out with a number of different steps on how to block out the sun. <laughs> well, we need the sun for a myriad of reasons. But So we're seeing all of the density patterns out there, but that is the propulsion system for our consciousness and our healing and our awakening. We have the blue moon, which means the second full moon in one calendar month on the 30th at seven degrees of Pisces. And this full moon conjuncts Saturn. So this is going to be bringing some um, fi finalizations, some commitments, maybe some fear. This can be tied to spiritual energy, health, government, authority figures. 
but fear begets more fear. Love begets more love. You are an energy generator. But whatever occurs at this full moon, it can be something finally ending too. But conversely, if you commit to something, it's going to carry a long trajectory, right? It's something that can be a long commitment at this full moon. Um, and now and in the future, we are moving and we will be moved beyond all of these fears and desperation as we connect with our galactic families in history. That's part of this Pluto Aquarius is we're awakening to the understanding that we are aliens, that our DNA strands are tied to different lives and experiences on different planets. However fearful they're going to present this, of course, the governments are always going to present anything as a fearful thing that they must protect us against so that we will all unite behind them and look to them for the answers. Because, you know, disclosure is happening. It's been happening. Disclosure happens every time someone is channeling and connecting with these different galactic beings that are often tied to their own history. If we saw an alien landing on the White House, that would be very concerning because that would mean a match in consciousness. And given the consciousness of our government and our systems, that would not be a good thing. Um, we are tied to these uh, beings and these dimensions and that's tied to our own levels of consciousness and awakening. When I'm teaching channeling and psychic development with clients, they will only take you as far as your level of development, and, and um, which makes sense. And it's all good. There's no judgment. It's like, here you are. So here's this energy coming in that can work with you at this level. Now, you may change and evolve, and then you may have another energy coming in who operates from a completely different database of knowledge and information. But we don't want to see <laughs> aliens on the lawn of the White House, et cetera, because that would speak to a consciousness match and that would not be good. But they're certainly going to propagate this through the media and that's the media's job is to deliver the fear programming. Um, be afraid, be very afraid. Because who profits when we're healthy? No one not in these systems. So, so disclosure is happening individually, collectively. If you're waiting for a government agency to tell you what's what, be very careful of the message attached to that, right? So uh, we're getting more and more connected with our galactic families and our history, and we will integrate the mental, the emotional, the energy bodies, and will be understood that these separate parts are an illusion and that our true state of being is a unified consciousness. As we continue to work with our own integration, even in the midst of fear and confusion and pain, pain actually is often a sign of transformation, psychological pain, emotional pain, and can be a powerful catalyst for our personal growth. Some of the most gifted naturopaths I know, for example, have healed themselves from debilitating illnesses. They've had illness after illness after illness, and it evolved their consciousness and their service and their talent, and actually was part of their purpose and why they came here on this planet at this time. But they, they developed and understood the experiential nature of these things. And the human experience of separation is but one part of who you are. And by embracing all aspects, we individually and collectively move to an enlightened state of consciousness. This includes diversity and people's ability and right to see things differently, to live differently, to choose differently. Uh, much love, everyone. It was great speaking with you. Take care.